Bob Scott. Coming at you. Uh, we're going to listen to something from the 1980s. 1984, to be exact. Uh, I, th I realize yesterday or today, I don't remember exactly. I think it must have been today, because uh, it was a really long day. And uh, But realized that I hadn't done a song from the 80s this week. Uh, the last one I think I did was Auto Man from Nucleus. Auto Man. Oh my god, that was back on August 1st? Have I really gone two weeks without doing a, a reaction to a, to an 80s track? I think I may have. Wow, that's crazy. Um, in fact, an auto man just came up today uh, in the car as I was driving home tonight. But anyway, we got to do a song from the 80s. And um, these don't ever get as many views <laughs> as everything else I do on the channel. In some cases, they don't even get as many views as the stuff from like brand new artists. But I love going back and listening to the 80s stuff because this is why I started the channel. Um, I wanted to go back and hear stuff that was new to me that I never got to hear because I grew up in a rural town in Wisconsin. And um, even the big city of Madison that I moved to to go to college didn't have a, an urban radio station, which is what it was called back then, um, until like 2000. So, uh, yeah, I only got the most, most absolutely popularist, that's a new word, uh, music, like rap and hip hop, uh, and none of the stuff that you would hear in like the actual big cities. I got none of that. So, uh, this is something from Jazzy J, uh, that's not, it's not Jazzy Jeff. Uh, Jazzy J is John Bias, born, I, I hope I'm saying the last name correctly b-y-a-s born november 18th 1961 amazing to think he's only eight years older than me uh also known as the original jazzy j or dj dj jazzy j uh as is an american hip-hop dj and producer uh born into a Gullah family in coastal south carolina Gullah is an african-american ethnic group oh i have heard of this uh, who predominantly live in the low country region of the U.S. Uh, states of South Carolina, North Carolina, Georgia, and Florida within the coastal plain and the Sea Islands. Their language and culture have preserved... Blah, 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 blah. Uh, a bunch of... But yes, I guess I have heard of Gullahs. Um, in coastal South Carolina, he moved with his family to New York City. New York City at an age... Uh, young age and took up the drums, his first instrument. His uh, first drum was a Roland drum machine. He began his career in hip-hop in the 1970s in the Bronx, New York. I'm sure still just a young teenager. The epicenter of hip-hop culture during the first decade of its development. So he was super early. He was, he was in there uh, at the age of 13. Yeah, there you go. An early member of Africa Mbambada's Universal Zulu Nation. He was a protege of Bombada as well as his older cousin, Cool DJ Red Alert, beginning as a Zulu King dancer in the early 1970s. Jay later became a Universal Zulu Nation DJ and was a member of the Zulu group Jazzy Five, with which he recorded the single Jazzy Sensation. Jazzy Sensation featuring Jazzy J. Uh, sorry. Uh, although Jazzy J began performing primarily at street parties in the 1980s, uh, sorry, at street parties, comma, in the 1980s, he began DJing in New York City clubs such as Negril, The Roxy, The Ritz, and Danceteria. Uh, he also hosted a hip-hop radio program on WRKS 98.7 KISS FM. In 1984, he played himself as the Roxy's DJ in the instrumental, uh, sorry, influential hip-hop film Beat Street. Uh, so the song we're going to listen to is actually from Beat Street, or it's from Son of Beat Street. Uh, uh, I found a cover art for this. Okay, I just saw something interesting. That actually had like the Beat Street movie logo and things like that. So he was all up in this. Uh, Jazzy J and Africa Mabarda performed some of the first DJ team routines and teamed up to battle both Grandmaster Flash Solo and Grand Wizard Theodore Solo. Uh, origin of Def Jam rec Recordings. This is interesting. Around 1984, Jay met Rick Rubin and assisted him in laying the foundation for what would become Def Jam Recordings. That is crazy. Uh, the label's first official single was the single 
It's Yours by T. Rock and Jazzy J. Jay later re- introduced Ruben to Russell Simmons, creating one of the most important partnerships in hip-hop production. Jazzy J. also put out Def Jam's third 12-inch in 1985 entitled Def Jam uh, B.W.? Uh, B slash W. That means black and white to me. I don't think that's what it means here. Uh, maybe the B-side, Cold Chillin' in the Spot? which featured Russell Simmons on vocals. In 1986, he participated in the recording Planet Rock, the album, which was certified gold. Also as a producer, Jay founded Jazzy J Studios in the Bronx, where he produced early recordings by Diamond D, Fat Joe, Brand Nubian, A Tribe Called Quest, wow, and others. He also began his own label, Strong City Records, through a partnership with Rocky Bucano. Uh, in the 21st century, he was featured in 2001 in the 2001 turntablism documentary Scratch. In the film, he displays his extensive LP collection kept in the basement of his home, which he claims comprises at least 300,000 to 400,000 albums. In 2000, Jazzy J was inducted into the Technics DMC DJ Hall of Fame. He sometimes performs together with other hip hop pioneer Grand Wizard Theodore. He is also Interviewed extensively in the 2003 hip-hop documentary Five Sides of a Coin, he has featured in the 2004 song Rock and Roll, Could Never Hip-Hop Like This, <laughs> Part 2 by Handsome Boy Modeling School, Duh, I've never heard of them, giving a background on himself and on rap as an art form. Jazzy J, sorry, this is a lot of information, but I'm finding it very interesting, so I hope you don't mind me reading all this. Jazzy J narrated a walking tour of the Bronx hip-hop by Soundwalk that won the 2004 Audi Award for Best Original Work. That sounds cool. So walk around the Bronx and have him tell you, like, this happened here, this happened here, this person was born here. That is a cool walk. That would be fun. Uh, He and his wife have three children, Jasmine, Matthew, and Kenya, and he lives in Bedford Stuyvesant, Brooklyn, New York. Uh, Matthew Bias is a member of the musical, Brooklyn musical group Phony People, PPL. Uh, In 2011, Jasmine graduated from the prestigious Eastman School of Music and is pursuing a career as a classic oboist. Oh, classical oboist. In 2014, she married Danny Lambert of Bray County, Wicklow, Ireland. This is like the weirdest specificity I've heard in a long time. In 2012, Jazzy Jazzy J confirmed he was working on a collaboration with DJ uh, DJ Fix, P-H-I-X, He was quoted speaking on the album saying, I'm just trying to get back to my roots. DJ Fix is the DJ who's going to help bring me back. The album will be released late in 2013. Uh, Apparently this hasn't been updated in a long time. I have no idea if that album is out, but uh, maybe I'll look as we're doing the song here. So uh, the thing I noticed on this Jazzy J Son of Beat Street is the executive producer was Harry Belafonte, and I think that's because Harry Belafonte was the um, executive producer or producer of the Beat Street movie and probably also Son of Beat Street. So kind of kind of cool. Um, Harry Belafonte, classic actor, musician? Musician. He did Deo. Uh, Daylight come and we want. I'm pretty sure that's right. I should double check that to make sure, but I think that's true. Um, let's listen to this. Son of Beat Street from 1984 four minutes and five seconds from jazzy j let's do it i love just the simplicity of those drum beats and again it's just because they they honestly they didn't know what they were doing this was all brand new but it's it's so raw and pure and cool and sounds old school obviously it just is so much fun to hear that's pretty cool sounding nice So 
good. How good is that? That just that simple scratch. Ah, it's so good. It's like a heart beat. He's got that really good uh, kind of ability to punch, like put energy behind the words of the song that was so, so central to so many artists back in the day. Like they just have this like uh, behind their their words. It just comes through more than people bother with now, right? Like it, it's, it's not like you're standing in fr up in front of a bunch of people and trying to project out to everybody. You're in a recording studio and you're trying to, like, this is a different, these people who are, who are recording at this time have a different origin. They're not just sitting at home in front of their, you know, their microphone and, and, rapping they're they're out in the street they're out at parties and it's absolutely you can tell it's the voice is so good it's like a heart beat. Beat street. it's like a heart beat beat street it's like a heart beat i like that in the like the sound of it is very cool i love it beat street it's like a heart beat. Beat street. It's like a heart beat. Beat street. Beat street. Beat street. Nice. So, and of course, all of this, this musical break, even with his like little vocalizations that he's putting in here, this is all for dancing. That's what this is for. It's obvious to me. It's like a heart beat. Beat street. It's like a heart beat. Beat street. It's like a heart beat. those breaks really like this <laughs> I really like this really excellent I mean super good super good I thought that was amazing I, it's entirely possible I could have heard that 
on the radio just because it was a movie tie-in. That was really good. I mean, like, really good. I like the sound of it. I like the playing around on the turntables. I liked a lot about that. What is this? It's electro. I like electro. Hip-hop, stage and screen, electronic. Yeah, yeah. Uh, excellent. I, I thought that was great. It's also interesting to see like some of those random sounds in there, like you know people yelling and uh, weird little interruption sounds coming in, that I think of as being more of a modern thing, especially if, when you look at music like Plug NB and things like that, where they've got all sorts of layers and things going on that are playing at the same time. But this kind of has a similar sort of thing. I also loved seeing like early stages of kind of electronic dance music in this obviously you know big b-boy influence and things like that or, or, or it's made to be for for break dancing and things like that but it's that is why i one of the many reasons why i enjoy hip-hop so much is because i think it really is the origins of electronic and EDM and uh, all the stuff that I totally loved in the 90s and 2000s and I still love right like up until today and um, it's just so cool to hear this stuff and where that really got its start because it kind of breaks out uh, you know you look at hip-hop and then it moves into house music and house music was all about dance hip-hop was also all about dance and break dancing and things like that but then it just morphs and goes off into these other directions i i love it it's so cool this is a great this is a great track i really thought this sounded fun uh pop squad check it out please like subscribe and share um if you would like to um support me in my efforts to make videos about hip-hop music whether it's new or old school uh you can do so down here cash app paypal patreon two dollars a month on patreon come on if you like this old stuff you're probably in your 50s or even 60s and like hip-hop and you probably have money i don't so two dollars a month would be awesome of you to subscribe to my patreon i would love that have a good night i'll be back with a couple more tracks Bye bye